Talking to Ms. Clemmie Greenlee and uh, Mr. Daniel Brown, uh, both members of an organization concerned with the uh, homeless population uh, in Nashville. And of course, Mr. Uh, Brown, let us uh, see if we can pick up with you during the second segment by having you to uh, look at uh, a typical day for example, because I'm sure that many uh, members of our audience have absolutely no idea about what it means to wake up in the morning and go from the morning and when you get up and, and until you lay down at night being homeless. And I think you've had experiences in at least three cities. And talk about it yeah, from that well, perspective. If you're staying at the mission, you get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay. From there, you eat something similar to breakfast. Mm -hmm. And you go from there to the campus. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the campus, then they might have something for you to do in the campus and you mess around there for a while. And after that, you're looking forward to lunch. Mm -hmm. So you plan your whole day around eating. Mm -hmm. Where you gonna eat it? Where you gonna uh, find work at? You know, and things like this. So mm -hmm. the typical day is to get up and check the, the, all the temporary services and see if you can get some work. Mm -hmm. You can't get some work, then you come back over there for lunch. Mm -hmm. Then you go to lunch, and then you might check back with the temporary service, see if they have anything. And uh, it's just a continuous day built around where you're going to eat at, what mm -hmm. you're going to do when you get your food, and who you're going to meet. And uh, if they stand in the outside, then they have to build their little tents and their mm -hmm. little mattress and sleep up there. And they wonder if Metro going to come and mess with them and bother them and tear their tents down or whatever. But it's a really, really rigorous day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's composed of surviving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. constantly surviving. Mm -hmm. And you have to really plan your day around where you can eat. Mm -hmm. Be close to the food, mm -hmm. close to what you can do that day. If you mm -hmm. get some work out, then maybe you can buy you an outfit or buy you something that you need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them just deal in drugs because they're so downtrodden. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing that when they get paid, they can afford is a beer mm -hmm. or something, some piece of drug or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they do that and they tie too tired to go to work the next mm -hmm. day. Mm. So it's, it's kind of like a hard trying. It's about survival. We didn't ask for survival, but it fell on us. Mm -hmm. we, didn't, we didn't, you know, one day you wake up and you can't afford to stay in your house anymore. Mm -hmm. Or you come from another place and you want to know where, first thing you need to know is where the mission is. Mm -hmm. Because people don't want you out in the street. Mm -hmm. People don't want you running around there. And then they like to panhandle. Mm -hmm. I don't panhandle myself because mm -hmm. I ain't got the nerve. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's what they do. They panhandle for their money any kind of way that they can get money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so it, it's a, uh, 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 Ms. Greenlee, it, it's a very, very difficult kind of situation, a different kind, different kind of life. Uh, is that what we're saying? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, uh -huh. it's mm -hmm. very different and difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, like he was stating, if you live under the bridge like I did, I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't have the pleasure to make it to the mission. Mm -hmm. But uh, you living under the bridge, you know, especially as females out here are homeless. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, you know, you, you, you worry about your personal hygiene. Where you gonna brush mm -hmm. your teeth? Mm -hmm. Where you gonna take care of your personal feminine care mm -hmm. products at? Mm -hmm. uh, and people look at you so rude and so cold and right. so stone faced mm -hmm. that, that they forgot they call it. Christians, mm -hmm. but they never once rushed out and said, mm -hmm. can I help you, my mm -hmm. child? Mm -hmm. And when you get a devastating moment as if the whole world have turned against you, mm -hmm. you have no hope. And people keep talking about drugs and alcohol. They need to understand mm -hmm. that some of these people went to drugs and alcohol because they were so depressed mm -hmm. and so stressed out because the world turned their back on them. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just calling out over and over and over that if mm -hmm. we demand housing, mm -hmm. if you make a, if you work a job and you make 525, mm -hmm. you cannot afford a house. Mm -hmm. Affordable housing the rent starts at six fifty and up. Right. That's not affordable houses for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So if they started recognizing that we have to come and start coming in together and accumulating some more money, mm -hmm. leveraging some more money, maybe off of some of these mm -hmm. condominiums that they keep building, mm -hmm. then we can afford housing with wraparound service mm -hmm. and get some of these people off mm -hmm. the street. Right. Now, now, do you think that, uh, this is a question to the two of you, do you think that the government has a responsibility to provide some kind of facility uh, within the community where people can go by and use the bathroom and, and wash their faces and et cetera, et cetera. Would that be too much of a burden on uh, the government or Metro or whatever to do that? No. We uh, would that be appreciated by individuals? Before? Yeah, it would be appreciated by everybody because people who catch the bus might have to use the restroom. Mm -hmm. So they need the, uh, the restroom facilities just as bad as we do. Mm -hmm. So we tried to advocate for that and uh, it got 
thrown out. They, they didn't mm. work on it for us. But they, they promised. They don't us. believe that uh, that that's <coughs> that's needed or what? They or don't believe it's that? needed. Uh, they don't believe it's necessary. Uh, the government has failed us severely. Yeah. Uh, I, I look at the system all the time and ask, what are y'all telling us here? It's three things I feel like you're telling us. Mm. Homeless, medical conditions, and drug addiction mm -hmm. is a population that the system won't wipe out. Mm -hmm. That's all I can see because they are not coming in and trying to accommodate us any kind mm -hmm. of way. Even tourists coming in from cross country to view the music city, mm -hmm. they have no way of using the bathrooms mm -hmm. unless they go buy something out of a restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, look, kids running around here in the summertime has no way to get water unless you get a bottle of water mm -hmm. because you have no water fountains mm -hmm. around any That's of these right. parks, mm -hmm. any of the courthouses. So mm -hmm. it's a necessity to have bathrooms, water, and housing because mm -hmm. it's a human right. Mm -hmm. And That's it's against right. a, a amendment. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the government know that. And this is why we keep talking mm -hmm. to them about this 200 units we're mm -hmm. asking them for every mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And so we, you figure that if, if you could get 200 units of uh, real low-income mm -hmm. housing, mm -hmm. that, yeah. that that would help alleviate some yeah. of the problems. It, it would help a lot. Uh, they the one promised 1,800 uh, uh, units of mm -hmm. housing by 2015. Mm -hmm. They've already made that promise. They they already made, made that promise. promise. The mm -hmm. mayor did. We just calling they bluff. Mm -hmm. And we just letting them know that we are not going to lay down with you guys making that promise and mm -hmm. not doing anything about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, go on, go on. Yeah, so I, I'm just saying, so that's why I had came to the point where everybody that's coming in here building all these condominium, the Signature Tower, the Western mm -hmm. Hotel, all of the people that's coming to our state, mm -hmm. making all of Nashville something that we are not even going to know what it is mm -hmm. in a minute, and it's our hometown. Just give us 1% mm -hmm. of you coming into our state, taking up 1%. Mm -hmm. You want to get the homeless out of the way, you come and help us, accommodate mm -hmm. us with mm -hmm. some funds that's so right. we can help build these 200 Mm -hmm. units in scattered sites and remove mm -hmm. the homeless mm -hmm. from in front of your business. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And do you think that that would be a, a, a impossible impossibility on a city as, as wealthy as Nashville, Tennessee? Yes. No. No, impossible. Mm -hmm. No, no. I mean, yeah. one percent of what they we are asking for them is not enough pocket change. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah, have it in their ashtray mm -hmm. in the car, but uh, mm -hmm. no, it's not. It's, yeah. it's just uh, where's they hard at? Okay, well, we uh, well uh, let, let me uh, make the audience aware that uh, next segment we'll have another person to uh, mm -hmm. come here and to talk mm -hmm. about uh, some of the issues dealing with the uh, homeless population. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> let me uh, now, Miss uh, Greenlee, uh, thank you and uh, <clears throat> Daniel. Mm -hmm for coming by and just giving us an excellent Thank insight so into, into this whole issue of the homeless population mm -hmm. because I think uh, as we've said on many occasions that the homeless population is really a, an oh. invisible kind of population. Yeah. We no see more. them, yeah. no uh, we don't uh, when we wish to and we don't see them when we wish not mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Of course, we'll be back with you following our, this short commercial break. Okay, thank you. Segment of the show for... Uh,